For these ones. No, not very, very gently like that. And the other one. Now, this the is why I do. The little boy helping Uri um, had his so hands covering the keys that I'm are in the palms now. of Uri's hands. And uh, by the way, these keys are not mine. And I'm concentrating now, and I want something to happen. Can if you feel anything in any hand, tell me. If you feel any any tingling sensation or heat or... Where do you feel this? The keys are in Uri's hands. The little boy is holding his hands over the keys, but... All right, now start concentrating, Ken. What, and what you will have to do is you have to say, Ben, I hope you have enough feeling there, because I don't know how long this will take. Uri's hands are flat. His thumbs are that? up in the air where everybody can see them. Something is happening here. And he, say, he thinks something is happening. He has now discarded the keys in his left hand. The boy still is covering the keys in Uri's right hand. Uri, incidentally, is left-handed. Okay, put, put, um, now lift, lift your, your hand. hand. Again, lift your hand. Do you see any keys no. bending? I see one. Oh, yes, this is yeah. bending. One key Wait is bending. Wait a minute, I have to show is this it? to the TV. Yeah, this key is going. Yeah, wait a minute. I... Yes, definitely. It's a big, thick brass schlag or schlaga type of key. I don't know what this just key Just like is the for. one he bent last night you for see us. what I'm doing is I'm stroking it very, very gently. And yeah, it's curling up more. I don't know you see that, Ken? It. It's really happening, It's huh? bending even more. Yeah, this will curl up a little more here. Um, you see, I'm putting an energy into it. Can you see this on the... It's incredible. There's no way, and there's absolutely no heat. Can touch the key, and you'll see the touch touch it under or under where it's bending. Do you feel any heat? There's absolutely no. You do feel, but there's no. But there's really no heat. It's uh, you touch it. I mean, you you Here. can see there's yeah. really heat or no. No, it's now, just the, the it's, body it's warmth. The body warmth. Body warmth, but feeling. it's continuing to bend. I'm just going to show it to the camera. Can you see that? <laughs> Another one. There's another one. The key, another one. The key that he has bent is fastened to a key this cluster, is an, I think another and another one key is here. beginning to bend on the cluster, fastened yeah, below this it. Yeah, going also now. And let me just start to everybody, because the TV camera is so... To back up the biological energy demonstration, Geller called on others in the audience to check for keys which may also have responded to the presence of Geller's energy. The Seattle Post-Intelligencer told the story of hundreds of radio listeners whose keys mysteriously began bending right in their pockets. In the audience, there were others who found themselves a terminal for the newly demonstrated source of power. Keys in the audience belonging to people here who are bending. And uh, we've seen keys a couple of women have shown him which are beginning to bend. There's a, here's a, a lady who is gray-haired and she's just handed him a key. That is bent. And uh, it is beginning to bend, very slightly, but noticeably. It's unreal because you know what's unbelievable here? That usually the kids that are coming to me that their kids bend, and usually it happens to children. Why? Uh, because children are more open-minded to this. I mean, look, these keys, look at these keys, they're totally bent. Would you say that it's uh, necessary for a person to believe they can bend yes. before they will bend? You see, a child believes that he's, he can bend a key because he's totally innocent to it. He totally believes that his key can bend, and it does. And it starts, and look, I mean, these keys are, I mean, you can't use these keys anymore. The scene is in the southeastern United States. And the photographer, Todd Anthony, is out to take his first trial pictures with his new 8mm motion picture camera. He goes to his local airport to photograph the action of a commercial airliner making its landing. The airplane makes its approach, and following it comes the big surprise, a UFO. The UFO, exhibiting anti-gravity capabilities, follows the airliner right down to the surface of the Earth to its landing. The UFO is a bell-shaped type, which has been seen and photographed all over the world since the 1950s. From Australia to Western Europe to South Africa to Mount Palomar in California, where George Adamski made excellent still pictures, all with the same bell-shaped configuration with three spheres on the bottom. There are some very significant things about this UFO type. Under the bell-shaped hull are three spheres. It is these globes which, when excited by a high energy level, cause the UFO to become immune to gravity. At this point, the UFO begins to take on a glow. At a higher state of excitation, it is ready to move into its home dimension, a dimension which is not light years away, but right here, interpenetrating our reality. 
A significant amount of scientific research evidence now seems to confirm the amazing fact that UFOs such as this are interdimensional spacecraft. These same types of UFOs have been photographed, invisible to the human eye, by means of ultraviolet filters and have been found to be trailing our commercial airlines flights at 35,000 feet, just as this flight was tailed by a UFO right to its landing. This time, it was visible. We have presented evidence that many times commercial flights near a UFO have lost the electrical control and their aircraft instrumentation. Pilots have confirmed this fact. Passengers have been injured as pilots have taken evasive action when surprised by a UFO which, to them, seemed to be on a collision course. Yet no world scientific agency or government group has seriously studied the problems of UFO encounters, or kidnappings, or losses of aircraft due to the UFO. Is the UFO mystery truly a scientific Watergate an incredible and dangerous cover-up? Understanding of the UFO may be beyond our science and political system, but it is not beyond the human mind. The alien intelligences of the UFO and the human earthlings are all common inhabitants of the cosmic energy intelligence continuum. Dr. Lawrence at Ecola Institute showed us with his Stellatron that the alien intelligences of the UFO might be in cosmic communication by use of a high-level energy which we know as etheric, bioplasmic, orgone, or nearly a hundred similar names. But it is unrecognized in our science and in our civilization which runs and communicates on the energies of the electromagnetic spectrum. Uri Geller mentally directs his biological energy and that of other people, and they bend metal keys. In the vicinity of UFOs, aircraft lose electrical control and instrumentation, and without doubt their structural integrity is also affected by this energy which bends keys. Other more incredible things are happening. During a single year, for instance, nearly 10,000 head of farmer's livestock have been mutilated in an area from Texas to Eastern Oregon and Washington. Police and agricultural scientists alike are helpless. No flying predator exists which mutilates an animal's tender parts or swallows it up completely, leaving behind a bear skeleton. UFOs can be blamed, says the University of Wyoming student newspaper. There is now striking evidence that the cause is not a configurated UFO spacecraft, but what is mistaken for a UFO is something just as new to science. Invisible flying predators, which can be photographed with the aid of an ultraviolet filter 18A and ectocolor film. This was first accomplished by Trevor James Constable, a UFO researcher for a quarter of a century. Constable in Southern California builds equipment which gathers orgone energy, or etheric, or biological energy. Years ago, he noted that his energy gathering devices attracted invisible critters. He also photographed them at 35,000 feet through an ultraviolet filter near a commercial jet. They were invisible to the pilot. This is an artist's drawing by Don Dixon of one of the frames of the research camera's film showing the invisible flying critter. Apparently, the predator sought by farmers and county sheriffs nationwide is the animal killer. The invisible flying predator.